For more than a decade, advanced semiconductor manufacturing has rested on one assumption so deeply embedded that it stopped being questioned. If you want to build the world's most advanced logic chips, you need extreme ultraviolet lithography. And if you need a UV, you need ASML, the only company on Earth with a working, high-volume EUV system, giving it a de facto monopoly over the most critical step in advanced chip manufacturing. And that reality shaped everything. There were no parallel paths and no meaningful alternatives at scale. EUV became the most complex manufacturing technology ever deployed in volume. Each tool costs well over $150 million. Each fab built around it costs tens of billions. And every advanced logic chip, Apple, Nvidia, AMD, Intel, now flows through one narrow technological funnel. At the same time, export controls tightened. China was cut off from EUV entirely. Even though they are reportedly reverse engineering the EUV machine, still it's far from implication. But something interesting just happened in Japan. Japan's Dai Nippon Printing, better known as DMP, announced that it has developed a 10 nanometer nano imprint lithography template designed for 1.4 nanometer class logic semiconductors. This wasn't framed as a futuristic concept or a someday lab breakthrough. It was positioned as a manufacturing technology with timelines attached. Customer evaluations began in 2026, with mass production targeted for 2027. And the most disruptive part of this isn't the resolution, it's the energy. According to DMP and broader industry comparisons, nano imprint lithography can reduce energy consumption in the lithography step to roughly one-tenth of current mainstream approaches, including EUV. EUV's energy burden is not limited to exposure. Plasma generation, vacuum maintenance, mirror conditioning, thermal stabilization, and the cooling infrastructure all run continuously. Power draw does not scale down gracefully when throughput drops or layers change. Once EUV is installed, the energy cost is locked in. Nano imprint changes that equation entirely. Instead of using high energy light to expose patterns through complex optics, NIL creates fine circuit patterns using the ultra fine resin patterns formed by stamping. A template, basically a master mold with a circuit pattern, presses into UV curable resin on the wafer. UV light cures the resin. The template is released. Then that resin pattern is transferred into the substrate. The core steps are straightforward. Press, cure, release, transfer. And because it's not fighting diffraction limits, the way optical lithography does, NIL can hit extremely fine features using a fundamentally simpler exposure concept. This is not just a different tool, it's a different manufacturing philosophy. As transistor sizes shrank from 28 nanometers down to three and now toward two nanometers, something counterintuitive happened. Chips got faster and more efficient but fabs did not. By the time you reach sub-3 nanometer logic, lithography becomes one of the largest single contributors to fab energy consumption. And it's not about the size of the chip most of the time. It's about the light. It takes exponentially more energy to produce light with shorter wavelengths. In fact, EUV light is produced by vaporizing 10 droplets with an extreme power laser, turning it into plasma 40 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Light with shorter wavelengths also need to be more focused. Reflecting EUV light, we can barely generate enough energy to produce 10 to 12 times with each mirror absorbing 30% of the light, and you end up with less than 1% of EUV light hitting the wafer. This is exactly the gap DMP is pointing at. Because NIL starts with a process that's like photolithographies, it writes progress on a mask using a focused beam of electrons. In EUV, this pattern is captured on a mirror and is then reflected onto the silicon. But in NIL, a master mask, or mold, made of quartz is used to create multiple replica masks, also made of quartz. The replica mask is then pressed directly onto the surface of a wafer, as though it were a stamp that's been coated with a liquid resin called a resist. Ultraviolet light from a mercury lamp, the kind used in chip making back in the 1970s, is then applied to solidify the resin and allow the mask to be removed from the wafer. Thus, the same pattern from the master mask is stamped onto the resist on the silicon. And just as in photolithography-based chip making, that pattern guides the series of etching, deposition, and other processes needed to create transistors and interconnects. This looks to be a simple, yet clever method for advancing light source-free nanolithography capable of high accuracy patterning. The system also has the advantage that it uses less power and should be cheaper to purchase and operate compared to EUV systems. Compared to EUV, this direct contact method requires fewer steps and tools, resulting in a simpler process that's less costly to operate. For instance, compared to an EUV system employing a 250-watt light source, Canon estimates NIL consumes just one-tenth of the energy. In addition, NIL takes up less of the extremely valuable real estate on the fab's clean room floor. Today's EUV systems are as big as double-decker buses, about 200 cubic meters. But a cluster of NIL systems occupies less than half that volume through a mass replication tool 
Taking up 50 cubic meters is also required. But nano imprint lithography itself is not new. DNP has been developing NIL continuously since 2003, building on decades of precision patterning, template fabrication, and materials engineering experience. The industry has seen this capability emerge before. Even Canon introduced a commercial 300mm nano imprint stepper back in 2018, capable of printing 10 nanometer features at production relevant throughput. So the question is, why was it ignored for so long? The answer lies in how semiconductor fabs are not conservative, fragile advanced manufacturing really is. Because they dislike innovation, they are conservative because failure is catastrophic. Yield tolerances are measured in parts per billion. One new defect mechanism can destroy an entire production line. Nano imprint is a contact process, and that raised immediate alarms across the industry. Particle entrapment between template and wafer, template wear over repeated use, overlay accuracy across multiple layers, residual resist thickness variation, and mechanical distortion at wafer scale. At the same time, EUV development was consuming nearly all available funding, talent, and political capital. The industry could not afford to gamble on two revolutions at once. EUV itself almost failed. It took decades, massive international collaboration, and a government-scale investment to make it viable. Most competitors gave up. ASML survived because everyone else ran out of the runway. Once EUV finally worked, the industry locked in. Changing lithography meant risking the entire economic foundation of advanced manufacturing. So if NIL is to compete, it will need to accelerate production capacity, increase lifetime of molds, improve particle and debris management, and boost throughput. Now, due to constraint of ASML chips, DMP is rising. But it does not claim nano imprint replaces EUV. Instead, it states that its new NIL template can partially replace EUV in selected patterning layers of advanced logic chips. Modern logic chips are not patterned uniformly. Some layers are brutally complex and alignment critical. Others are repetitive and dominated by density rather than geometry, such as contact holes, vias, and certain back-end-of-line layers. These layers do not require EUVs of full optical sophistication. They require consistency, repeatability, and yield without massive energy overhead. The economics reinforce this shift. EUV does not merely cost a lot up front. Its entire ecosystem is expensive to sustain. Tools, masks, pellicles, maintenance, facilities, uptime risk. Once a fab commits, it is locked into that cost structure for decades. NIL templates are not cheap, but they behave differently. They can be reused, replicated, and optimized for repetitive layouts, shifting the cost curve in ways EUV cannot. DNP has stated it expects NIL template sales to reach roughly 4 billion yen annually by fiscal year 2030. It has already entered discussions with semiconductor manufacturers, initiated devaluation programs, and plans to expand production capacity as demand ramps. The company is positioning Nano Imprint as a core growth driver within its semiconductor segment, not as a side experiment. There is also a longer-term element that rarely gets discussed. DNP is developing three-dimensional Nano Imprint templates that can transfer complex 3D shapes into substrates. That capability opens the door to structures and device concepts that traditional projection lithography struggles to achieve. While not immediately relevant to logic production, it hints at a future where imprint-based manufacturing enables functions that were previously impractical. The challenges remain real. Defectivity must meet EUV-level expectations. Overlay must remain stable across full 300mm wafers under real thermal and mechanical stress. Throughput must hold under real factory conditions. Integration risk must be controlled across the entire process flow. Foundries do not adopt technologies because they are clever. They adopt them because they work, every day, at scale. That is why evaluation starts in 2026, and mass production is targeted for 2027. But for the first time in years, ASML's absolute dominance is being questioned not politically, not rhetorically, but technically. Not replaced, not defeated, but weakened. And that opens a door far larger than Japan. China is approaching this from two directions at once. On one track, it is still attempting to reverse engineer and approximate a UV-class capabilities through deep UV multi-patterning, advanced light sources, and domestic tool development. Even through matching, full EUV performance remains a long-term challenge. At the same time, China is deliberately building alternatives that bypass EUV altogether. In 2025, Chinese firm Poolin Technology shipped its first functional nano-imprint lithography tool, marking a practical step toward an EUV-independent manufacturing path. This dual strategy is intentional. Rather than betting everything on recreating the most complex lithography system ever built, China is hedging. Nano imprint shifts the problem away from extreme optics and toward materials, templates, contamination control, and process scaling. 
areas where progress can be made incrementally and domestically. It doesn't replace EUV overnight, but it steadily reduces the leverage of EUV dominance layer by layer. So if EUV is no longer the only gatekeeper, who do you think benefits the most from that shift? The countries that already control the system, or the ones quietly building alternatives outside of it? Comment your take, and if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI and semiconductor breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe for daily coverage.